Okay, we are live. Okay, so this morning I had expected to spend a little bit more time on everyone eats. Uh, one of, just to be clear, one of my goals is I really think this is a brilliant idea and um, it seems to be working out well. And I was hoping to see if we could some certainly extend it through the fiscal year. That seems to have been accomplished. And I also, as we go forward in the budget for FY22, I'm hoping there's some way we can fund it even further. So uh, with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Gary Holloway. And why don't you bring us up to date on the program and its financing and what it looks like for the future and what the administration's position is at this point on the continuation of the program. Absolutely, thank you, Senator. Um, thank you all so much for having me this morning. Um, Gene Hamilton, uh, Gary Holloway, Downtown Program Manager with the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Agency of Commerce. Um, I'll be brief, um, provide an overview of kind of where we are with the program um, financially, and I'll let Gene speak to any other specifics and happy to answer any questions you have. I know we're tight on time this morning. Um, as you know, we've been running the Everyone Eats program since August uh, in all 14 counties across the state. Uh, we initially had a $5 million appropriation, which went to $6.4 million uh, in 2020. Uh, and we've been able to get an additional $2.6 million to keep the program running uh, in January uh, and February. Some of the good news we received at the end of December was a favorable determination from FEMA for eligibility uh, for that 75% funding. Uh, reimbursement, which was which was great news. Uh, we did a we did a small request initially uh, because a little faster process to get a determination back. Uh, the second request we put in was for all of the expenditures that we had in 2020, and we are waiting any day on a determination uh, of the reimbursement of those funds at the 75 percent rate. Uh, one of the one of the challenges um, we had just from a program, pro programmatic standpoint is just making sure that we have the cash flow that we need, but we've been able to work, work that out uh, with, um, um, you know, with the administration just to be able to kind of get the funding in place so we can keep the program moving forward. Uh, once we get the FEMA reimbursement back, we can actually continue to do those requests and roll money uh, back into the program so that we can run it with our intention through the end of June. One other piece of news that we just heard in the last uh, week or two, uh, the president actually uh, provided further uh, direction um, and is allowing us to utilize, well, not us, is allowing FEMA to reimburse uh, emergency feeding programs at 100%. Uh, so that means that everyone eats going all the way back to the beginning of the pandemic is able to recoup uh, any eligible FEMA costs at 100% all the way through, I believe it's September of 2021. And that's not only the emergency feeding program, there's a number of other programs that are eligible under FEMA that would also qualify. So it's a great news for the state because we have a number of programs that we're getting reimbursed by and we can get that money back and repurpose it for other, other, um, for other things. Um, so maybe I'll pause there. Um, so yeah, you know, one thank you. One thank you for that. One question I would have is that is great news. Uh, I don't know if you can quantify the number, but is it the intent of the administration, or is it too early to repurpose those dollars to continue the program beyond June? Yeah, as far as the game plan we have with the administration, the intent is to continue funding the program at the current level through June 30th. We have not, um, quite frankly, we haven't had a programmatic conversation, um, nor have we requested any additional beyond that. Um, I'll let Gene speak a little bit more, but it's, it's a really complicated program uh, that takes hundreds of volunteers, um, you know, hundreds of staff, hundreds of restaurants and farmers, uh, and it, it, it may very well be that to operate a program like this the way that it's currently operating is not sustainable from a, from
from a multiple from multiple levels. Um, but we are having some conversations about how can, what can we learn from this program to be able to kind of take the local food system to be able to support restaurants, to be able to feed people, uh, to be able to work with our partners that have just been terrific um, from the um, from the food sector, from people who are providing uh, meals to those in need who really have the structure in place, right? The food banks um, and the shelters and whatnot that have these systems in place to be able to get food to people who uh, who need to. And so we're trying to get folks signed on to those state programs, um, Three Squares, Vermont, these programs that are really designed to, um, um, to get people assistance. Um, this, is, this is supplementing those programs and, and really helping in, in so many ways from a food insecurity as well as an economic um, recovery standpoint. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess uh, going forward, you know, we'd like to, you, we'd like to support the tweaks to the improvements to the program. We like the, the win, win, win kind of situation, or at least I do. And, um, and, you know, if it means one-time general funds, in my mind, that's something to be considered, but it seems like it's even more preferable if some of these repurposed federal dollars can be put into this beyond June for June 30th. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I don't, I don't see people's pictures. So if anybody wants to oh, speak, go ahead. Keisha has a question, but Gary, as you're giving us a big picture of this, if you could just give us a, a, how many meals have been served so far, because it's just an incredible number. Gene, you have that number. I, it keeps changing by the week. And so you have probably a better indication of where we're at right now. Yeah, I, you know, what actually <clears throat> is easiest for me to report on is, um, would you just identify yourself for the no, record? No. Yes, I am Jean Hamilton and I serve as the statewide coordinator for Everyone Eats and I'm that project and I am based out of the Southeast Vermont Community Action Agency, um, SEVCO. So, um, oh. yeah, what's easiest for me to report is that from the program start in August through the end of December, we distributed about 530,000 meals. And at this point, um, hubs came back online, you know, starting the week of January 18th, but have been sort of filtering back in. So some started the 18th, some started the 25th, um, but we're, we're back up to uh, our operating level of about 40,000 meals a week. Um, and if I could, um, Senator Shrotkin, reflect a little bit on your question about post June 30th. Yes. So, um, you know, one thing I just want to highlight as we think about the future is how incredibly adaptable this program has been. You know, the legislation that funded it was written in July. Um, <clears throat> we had programs up and running by the first week of August. Uh, the community hubs and the partner organizations have been incredibly flexible and inc incredibly responsive. Um, we you know, thought the program that the CARES Act funding was ending on December 18th, I think it was, and then it got to extended to December 30th. We didn't know if we had any funding after that. We found out in early July, J January that we might have funding on January 18th um, and programs came back online really rapidly on January 18th um, to, because that funding became available. And, um, you know, it's been a real game of, okay, now there's FEMA funding. Oh, there's CARES funding. It's, it's been very uh, turbulent, <laughs> but the communities have been really responsive. And so, you know, we have a ton of enthusiasm between the community hub organizations and also our steering committee to, to think about what, what could happen after June 30th. And, um, you know, I just want to highlight that this program has been created by a steering committee that's met weekly since July. That includes John Sales from the Food Bank, Faye Conti from Hunger Free Vermont, you know, Ellen Kaler from Farm to Plate Network, staff like Gary from ACCD. We also have reps from Agency of Human Services and Agency of Agriculture, Vermont Fresh Network, Vermont Independent Restaurant Coalition. We have a very powerful steering committee that is really exploring what are the lasting impacts of this program? What have we learned from this program that can in inform other existing programs, but also what can we potentially build that's something new post June 30th? And you know, some of the, the biggest lesson of course is, oh my gosh, when you tie economic development to poverty relief, 
magical things happen in community. People feel pride, they feel dignity, they feel so um, <clears throat> proud to be able to help their neighbors while they're asking for help. And there is just, there's no way we can ever unsee how much better that is than um, you know having to go through the stigma and shame of feeling like you're asking for a handout. Um, so that's a big lesson learned. I think we're also really seeing across our steering committee, the value of prepared meals and that prepared meals will are really an essential part of how we think about food security in the future. There are just too many people who don't, cannot make food for themselves um, for various reasons and prepared meals need to be part of the solution. So at the same time that you all and we all are thinking about like, what can we do with this incredible thing that we've created on the fly? Uh, you know, there are also groups like World Central Kitchen um, who have been doing this work internationally um, for a number of years. And of course have been very active um, in, you know, through this COVID pandemic and um, World Central Kitchen in partnership with uh, you know, now Vice President Harris and, and other legislators last year proposed the FEED Act, which actually explicitly talks about engaging restaurants as part of emergency feeding. And so, you know, so our committee is really excited to keep thinking about what, what does this program look like beyond June 30th and beyond COVID. And so I hope, you know, you'll, you'll stay engaged with us on that conversation um, because it really just has been so beneficial. Well, that's perfect. I think we want to stay engaged. Uh, at least this, at least I do, and I think members of this committee do. Can you like? Um, well, well, many members of this committee, many members of this I, committee have actually helped hand out all those meals. So, no, I mean, I don't know no. how many of us have, but I assume most of us have because it's been a big community effort. My only concern is volunteer, overwhelming volunteer time because any program that depends on volunteers to to do this i think i think to go to gary's point i think that's the one challenge in this um so could that, you uh, can you gene like at the uh today is the um 11th can you like uh at the end of the month send us uh just a memo of an update uh committee uh you should know one of the things uh Nathan in reaching out to do more has asked for like additional tasks from us. And one of the things I've asked him to do is to keep track of requests that committee members make during testimony of witnesses. <laughs> I find frequently they go unfulfilled. And so he's gonna like, you may get a note from him uh, soon, a reminder say the committee asked for this by a certain date so it can keep stuff flowing and we don't, uh, forget about our requests, but I think we're on the same page here and uh, it'd be great to know how your meetings are going. Senator Rahm. Chair, well, first of all, I, I couldn't help but but think when Jean was talking, um, it, if you haven't read, there's a great Harvard business case review uh, of Doug Rausch opening the daily table in the Boston area. Doug Rausch was the general manager of Trader Joe's in their major expansion. And he just wanted to open like a lower budget Trader Joe's outside of Boston and Roxbury and other areas that are um, have a uh, high concentration of people on, on food stamps. And um, he wanted to create a market where people's food stamps lasted the whole month. And he was about to open and realized nobody was gonna come to his discount Trader Joe's because they didn't have time to take the food off the shelf and prepare it at home. And he actually, um, brought in a, a, a guy who's from the Bronx, but learned how to glean food and create gourmet prepared food in Vermont at the gleanery. Um, and he brought him in, they did 75% prepared food, much more like a Whole Foods, which people who have all the time in the world still want prepared food. And um, they completely redid their model and they're incredibly successful now uh, and have a, a much greater concentration of prepared food. Um, so just cannot say enough good things about this program and really kind of wanted to look past June 30th. So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I wanted to ask Gary and Jean, you know, is this something where it can be really well integrated into three squares and, you know, being able to say, here's, you know, your, your three squares program benefit, here's your hundred dollars for everyone eats. 
um, so that, you know, it's not a separate program. It's not downloading something different. It's everyone should have the right to prepared food and maybe once in a while to take their family to a restaurant. Um, and I just think we should build, build that into our permanent program. So I was hoping that's where you were going anyway. Yeah, I'll take a stab and then Gary, um, definitely jump in. The sort of paths that we've started to outline that we could see this program going forward, you know, one clear path is as identified with the FEED Act is, is sort of transforming emergency feeding in future crises and, and moving away from a reliance on MREs and actually using and, and employing the, the food um, and food prep infrastructure we have in our community. So using that decentralized infrastructure, I think that's a big takeaway and feels like pretty doable as an outcome of this pandemic. Um, another is like you're saying, Senator Ram, about um, of integrating prepared meals into SNAP. And there is definitely some advocacy about around that on the national level. Um, you know, it feels a little early for that, but the way things move in this COVID time, like it, it could just happen. <laughs> um, but I think that's a great idea and, you know, and certainly, one of the benefits of SNAP is you just use your card in the normal marketplace. There's no stigma or reduced stigma. Um, and that would be really great if people could just visit their local restaurants and get the, get the food that would really serve them. Um, so those are sort of the two programs that we've imagined, but uh, you know, at a more grassroots level or sort of organizational level, you know, partners at the food bank and food shelves and everybody who's touched this program is thinking like, oh, how can we implement aspects of this and integrate aspects of this into our current programming. Um, you know, I think our, our, what we've seen Capstone do is really, really, I mean, what we've seen every hub do is really powerful, but if there's time, some time for us to bring some of our hubs in, um, or maybe I'll try to put that in the report, is just some, some examples of how different hubs are thinking about integrating this in a more uh, long-term way. Jean, thank you right. so much. Um, we're gonna have to, move on. I guess I have one uh, final question. You're doing pretty well statewide at this point. I mean, when we push this forward together, it may be an easy lift, but it'll be a lot easier if you have supporters all throughout the state in every county and uh, it's operational, uh, not disproportionately around the state, but sort of equally around the state. So I'll leave you with that. I assume you 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 make good progress on that, um, but we do need to move on at this point. Good work. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. That it's you. great. Yep. Thank you for the we support. Love, we love this program. Thanks for thanks for everyone involved. It's it's truly remarkable how much people stepped in and and led this program. Yeah. Yeah. Thank thanks. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Uh